Hello everyone, welcome back. As we are fast approaching the much anticipated launch of Ryzen 7000 series of desktop processors, there is a new generation of integrated graphics that comes with which is called the RDNA 2. There are already some benchmarks showing impressive results and I, for once, cannot wait to see how and what it does to the low-end market of dedicated GPUs. I've yet to test the current generation of Vega APUs, that being said, I bought one few months ago, so expect a video soon. Today's video is all about AMD's desktop processor from way back then, the 886500. Codename Richland and released nearly a decade ago in 2013, this FM2 Plus mid-range AMD desktop processor featured 4 cores and it was made on the 32 nanometer node. But, most importantly, it also comes with a Radeon HD 8570D. I've never owned or tested any FM2 Plus based chips, but thanks to a family member who bought this as a part of a cheap gaming PC on eBay and no longer had any need for this after upgrading to 3rd gen Ryzen, that's changing now. Originally part of a HP Pavilion 500 desktop PC, this system came with 6GB of DDR3 memory, R7240 GPU and 1TB of spinning storage, which was perhaps ok for 2013. I also get to finally use my latest addition to my testing equipment, the Openbench Table BC1. Upgrading the system to 16 gigs of DDR3 memory running at 1600 MHz and a SSD was a must. So let's evaluate the speed of the CPU first. Using the Cinebench R20, the A8 scored 578 points. CPU-Z single thread score was 226 points and 736 for multi-score. The CPU will happily boost to 4.1 GHz but it's unfortunately locked, so no manual overclock for me to play with. The FM2 Plus socket on this board will happily take up to A10 7850K processors, but, well, I've looked around and those are really pricey. Let's now take a look at both the integrated and dedicated graphics that this system came with. The integrated HD 8570D was a Terascale 3 based iGPU running 800MHz core clock with no dedicated memory, instead relying on the system memory which is running at 800MHz. The dedicated R7240 was an entry level GPU that launched in 2013, made on GCN 1.0 architecture. Equipped with 2GB of DDR3 memory clocked at 900MHz and running a base core clock of 730MHz, this low profile GPU was never aimed at gamers although it does support DirectX 12 but only of feature set 11.1. This card requires no external power. As you are all aware, combining two or more AMD GPUs in Crossfire can be really beneficial at times, but not always. By the way, be sure to check some of my older videos for that. How about the APU and the R7240? Well, this system allows for such synergy and I can enable the so-called dual graphics mode to boost my experience, but was it any good? Let's play some games, shall we? We are going to start with a classic that the stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is. Fighting for bare life in the arena and using the maxed out settings at 1080p. I saw 30 FPS on average when using just the APU. I mean, call me impressed. Then nearly 45 FPS when using the R7 and almost 60 FPS, a 97% increase when using both the dual graphics mode. Wow, we're off to a great start here. Feeling brave, GTA 5 was next, and here, doing my favourite thing, shooting the rear tyres and then watching those poor NPCs drifting. The 1080p normal aka lowest settings so just 17 FPS on average with the integrated graphics. The R7 was staggering 86% faster with 32 FPS on average and finally, a very small bump to nearly 34 FPS when utilising the dual graphics. However, the 1 and 0.1 lows were significantly worse. A quick match in Rocket League and here the APU pushed nearly 18 FPS on average at 1080p with performance graphical settings. Sadly, 
which was not enough to play the game at all. The R7 fared slightly better, with 25 FPS on average, which is a 39% increase. Finally, the dual graphics mod barely managed to outperform the R7 at 26 FPS on average. Well, I wouldn't call this a good experience at all. And the last game tested today was Battlefield Bad Company 2. I've recently picked this up on sale, and what a game! Again, 1080p and low graphical preset, the first level ran on the APU with average of 33 FPS and was really very playable. The R7 was 51% faster at 51 FPS average. And sadly, the dual graphics mode actually performed worse and dropped to 44 on average. Well, this was some unusual but interesting testing. The A8 6500 and its integrated graphics showed some great potential and the unusual dual graphics mode worked with some games which was good to see. By lowering the resolution to 720p, which I'm not really happy to do, would really help to achieve even more smoother gameplay. I would go as far as to say that this APU would be perfect to run some older games without the need of a dedicated GPU. So if you have one lying around, don't decommission it just yet. The CPU is perfectly capable of running day-to-day -day tasks and can be had for very little money. Looking at the current and upcoming AMD's lineup makes me think just how much can be achieved in 5 years. The future of GPU-less gaming was always an option, even back in 2013 as we saw with today's testing. Did you ever own some of the A-series of AMD chips or even try the dual mode with other processors? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And as ever, thanks for watching and I hope to see you all soon.